Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge. And this is Cruise Peru's episode number 90. 90! I know. I made a lot of these things. You know, substance without substance, right? It's the food without the nutritional value. The Cruise Peru's. Yeah, mostly because I don't script these things. I just go off my fucking head. Go off my fucking head. Listen, man, early mornings, I don't really have the best expressions, and I'm really not a morning person. Although, I, I wake up at like 6 a.m. almost every day, 6 or 5 a.m. It really depends on the day, but boys and girls, not a lot of sports ball going on right now. Seriously, there is not. Uh, baseball, baseball's going on, but what's frustrating to me about baseball, let me let me, let me just break you break you break you let me just break you by talking okay let me break this down now the los angeles dodgers uh, i forget which um channel i believe it's sports spectrum net la they have a contract with that you know the broadcasting company and as far as i'm uh, i'm aware Unless you're in Los Angeles with that specific cable channel, you cannot watch Dodgers games. Or I don't even know if you can do that, to be honest. And the rare times I get to see the Dodgers is in affiliate channels that I have um, with the cable company, right? The fucking Fox West, Fox Desert, because Arizona is desperate for fans, apparently. And... Every time I see shit like that, it's like, oh, cool. Like, I get to see my Dodgers. That's awesome. And other times, it's, it's frustrating because, you know, there's obviously blackouts because of TV contract rights. And what should have been a nationally broadcasted game on ESPN was blacked out when I was trying to watch it. So I was pissed. I was fucking pissed. I'm trying to watch my Dodgers play the Phillies. And, you know, the funny thing was, as as much as I wanted to watch this game, the reality became something real quick by the first inning. And uh, around the first inning, boys and girls, okay? So so in the first inning, I was at the bank taking care of some fucking, like, business. And next thing you know, I get home. It's in the bottom of the fifth or the top of the fifth inning. And it's 7 one what the fuck? Listen, I didn't watch this game of obviously, you know, logically because I bitched about the blackout. But caught up with the score. Um, took a look at those stats, even though I, I barely know the stats. Man, Phillies. All that hype. All that hype and Bryce Harper in this. This is it, huh? That's it. I know there's a couple more games in their series right now, but wow, Phillies, all that hype, all that hype, and you can't even muster a fucking result. Jesus Christ. As for the Dodgers, man, I, I listen, I'm, I've been on record saying this. If they can get to the NLCS this season, I'm already a happy camper. I'm, listen, with, with sports teams, my sports teams at least, I settled. Because I know it could be completely worse. It really can be. And they, they can break your heart in the worst way possible, each and individual teams that I follow. Boys and girls, I've gone over them so many times. The Seahawks, the Dodgers, Arsenal Football Club, Vegas Golden Knights, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Support all five of those teams. No other teams. Because that, that sports monogamy, right? And, you know, watching these Dodgers these last few months, I've, I've got I, I to say, I'm very impressed. But just get to the NLCS. That's, that's really my expectation for this franchise right now. Just get to the NLCS. We'll see what happens after. You know, we, like nothing's guaranteed after that shit, in my opinion. Um, hopefully they figure out solid rotations until October. Like, just make sure everyone's healthy, raring to go. Because we had Chris Taylor 
get injured after that Boston game. Fuck. I was so pissed when I saw that shit. Like, I saw, like, Chris Taylor, uh, potentially, like, long-term injury, whatever the fuck. Uh, it wasn't long-term injury. It, it was, he tore something, like, something in his arm. Tore it or broke? I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. Like, I, I am trying to recall, but I can't. And as excited as I want to get about baseball, the fact is I can't watch my team because of contract rights, television broadcasting rights. So that kind of pisses me off still. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. With a majority of my team, and I mean Arsenal, Seattle Seahawks, and the Los Angeles Dodgers, I can barely watch them in the regular season. Because of weird broadcasting rights and uh, <coughs> region locks, uh, which which applies for the Seattle Seahawks, I can't watch Seattle games uh, unless I go to like a local bar and they got all the games playing at once, which which I usually do, which I usually do, um, especially last season. That's what I was doing, but it's frustrating. It's frustrating because you want to watch your team, you want to support your team all the way. And I know all you fuckers are saying, oh, why don't you just get it illegal? Yeah, well, they can track your IP address and shit, and yeah, don't, 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 don't be a pirate. All right, you're not Somalian. And to all the Somali people out there that are getting offended, really, really? All right. I swear to God, everyone gets offended now. Everyone gets offended now. I say something along the lines of anything. There's just backlash. <laughs> what? Crazy, man. But those region locks, man. Those region locks and just uh, excess shit. Like excess shit that cable companies try to pro like you know, attach on there. Like ESPN has ESPN Plus, which is a lot of horseshit. Because, oh, let's watch exclusives like lacrosse. What? And NBC has NBC Gold, which is fucking worthless. It like, really is. But yeah, that that's behind those things, behind those paywalls are my teams that I can watch. And then there's the Dodgers, which... You, you can't even fucking hope to watch. Again, unless you got that fucking janky-ass illegal setup that people got, you know. Those, like, fucking uh, jailbroken Yorokus or jailbroken uh, Amazon Fires and shit. Yeah, back in the day, I used to use Cody. That's right, boys and girls. Surprise you with a little bit of that fucking piracy knowledge, huh? That's right. Cody was a big deal back then. My God, that's those were the days where torrenting was a was an adventure. The high seas, the high seas of piracy. You torrent what you can, and you torrent what you can't. Because why the fuck not, right? I mean, seriously, the, the, these these teams. I understand the television broadcasting rights and contracts provide huge revenues, like, huge, it's kind of stupid how much money these baseball teams make, huge sums of money, but simultaneously, man, like, don't you want your fucking fans to watch the goddamn games, huh, like, I, I don't know, I, I guess, like, I, I'm, I'm just an old man complaining about just, why can't I just get my sports in five channels, this is bogus, <laughs> Ah, <coughs> uh, fuck. It is bogus, though. It is bogus. So I want all my fucking teams to like, watch home games live. You know? Even preseason, I wouldn't mind. And speaking of preseason, Arsenal. Arsenal Football Club. Boys and girls. Had their preseason friendly. First preseason friendly in the United States. And I'm not going to lie to you. I am very behind on my Arsenal reviews. I haven't even done a season review yet. I should. I mean, here's the thing. Golden Knights. Uh, 
Lakers and the Arsenal Football Club. I need to make fucking season reviews. I haven't done so already, which is a problem. Probably do it this week. I keep saying that every fucking week and I don't. Because the preseason kind of crept on crept up on me with Arsenal. I, I really didn't figure like this this would happen so quickly. But there they are in Colorado. Their starting eleven was a bunch of young cats. Got a couple of goals in there. That Martinelli fella, that young kid, that 18-year-old that we just uh, brought into the club, he scored a goal. That was nice. Um, the reality of Arsenal, to me, uh, is very simple, boys and girls. Arsenal's the one club that will make sure, like, my heart is broken and, and just stays there on the ground. Right? And I, I recognize that. I've recognized that for a long time. That Arsenal is just a completely dick-punching club that won't do anything to inspire the fans. Nor will they do anything to bolster any kind of winning mentality, winning core. It, it, it's just... It's a business model. I'm already, like, dead on the inside because of them. Thanks, Arsenal. Appreciate that. But, hey, preseason started. Good times. And... Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Not, not much to get excited with Arsenal, um, except the fact that they got Adidas as their sponsor this season. What the fuck is this asshole doing? Dude, fuck you. Like, are you fucking kidding me, you fucking sack of shit? Like, what the fuck? Why the fuck did you slow down, you fucking asshole? Holy fuck. God damn it, dude. Like, fucking idiots out here. But yeah, speaking of idiots and uh, Arsenal... As moronic of a fan I am, uh, as I am, you know, I, I I gripe about Arsenal all the time, right? I understand. I try to understand and research the dynamics of the club right now and what's going on. And really, with, with I believe it's called Cronky Sports and Entertainment. Stan Kroenke own company. I just I I fucking hate that. I despise that man. I truly do. I really detest that owner so much because he, the guy is a bottom dollar. You know, not really settle. Like just a real settler. Doesn't really fucking go for it. And Arsenal isn't even his big money maker. This it's just kind of the shit across the pond that he can get easy money off of. Stan Kroenke doesn't fucking care, and it shows. Like it's showing in this club right now. Like the lack of passion, the complacency, and the ignorance from the top the top heads. It it it's really showing. Arsenal just looks like a fucking middle tier club. And I'm talking, when I say middle tier, I'm not talking 6th or 7th. I'm talking like 12th, 11th. That's what Arsenal feels like right now. And I, I, I hate the fact that it, it's reminding me of that. I really do. I really want Arsenal to be great. But with, with poor leadership up top, and this is true for any business, not just sports. With poor leadership up top that's muddled with complacency and just arrogance and ignorance nothing's gonna get done nothing's gonna get done I've worked in an environment like that I've seen environments like that far too many times it just doesn't work it's unfortunate because I want I want Arsenal to be good I want to see that football club win trophies and you know fill that Emirates with with fans with loud fans I just you know, when Arsene Wenger was in charge, I understand that, you know, top four was a banter thing, and, you know, people were saying, oh, four, either only a four. I honestly miss those days. <laughs> because if this is what Arsene had to deal with and still somehow finessed himself into fourth place, the man's a fucking genius, and he doesn't get enough credit. And I remember saying when he left the club, like, this isn't the way you leave, this isn't the way you let a legend leave a club. You see to it that he he plays out his contract, no matter how bad it is, and then after his contract is over, then you let him walk. 
they terminated his contract with a year left in his in his uh, in his term. And it was it was just frustrating. And it's been mostly downhill since then. And I know Unai Emery has done a pretty damn good job, relatively speaking. Got us fifth place. Got us to Europa League final. You know, I I <clears throat> at the end of the day. I can bitch and moan about Arsenal, but yeah, I mean, relative to what we could have been, and I mean, like, seventh place, nowhere near Europa League final, yeah, like, it could have been worse. So for me, like, I'm at that middle point of like, yeah, it sucks, but it could always be worse. You could be Sunderland. <laughs> Seriously, you, you could be Sunderland. As Arsenal fans, listen. I know it's not the greatest season right now. I know a lot of signings, you know, supposed rumor mill signings, they're not getting done because Arsenal just a bunch of cheap assholes. And my buddy's trying to make fun of me on that on that shit all the time with Arsenal, but at the same time, I'm like, dude, like, you're beating the dead horse at this point. I'm not, I'm not gonna fucking, like, I try not to react anymore with Arsenal because, like, what the fuck is the point? Like, Arsenal has really gotten me to this point of, like, I love the club. I really do. You have no idea when I say that, boys and girls. I love Arsenal. Arsenal Football Club is one of the main reasons I fall, I fell in love with sports in general. And to this day, you know, in the last five years, I, I really do hold myself as one of the proudest Arsenal fans. But, you know, when the executives and top heads that represent the club don't give a fuck, and they are making it blatantly obvious that they they don't really care about competition, the bottom dollars is all that matters, you get a little bit jaded. You do. I mean, you just do. You, go, you just get a little bit jaded and frustrated. Because as as well as you want your club to play, like when you when you get shit like this, it's like dude, what are we gonna do? I don't know. Just support and you know accept accept the bullshit. Uh, what a really depressing way to start the morning. I know it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I gotta get a little bit depressed so <laughs> I can write a podcast that's a bit nefarious. Oh man, otherwise you think I'm just going to be hilarious. <laughs> Grandmaster Pissant! It's my name. <laughs> Call me the changer of the game. You know, improv singing is not my specialty. <laughs> so I will just leave it at that shit. But boys and girls, we have arrived to our destination at our house. Which, to be quite honest, like I, I feel like I haven't done this normal ass cruise peruse in a long time. So I want to kind of savor this moment with you boys and girls. Just sit on down, maybe bring the puppies here you good folks deserve some puppy action little buddy little babies but here's the thing sports ball can get get us depressed you know it can it can fuck our it can, it can fuck up with our moods right all the time all the time i could i could tell i could tell you that personally with um all my teams right all my teams have at some point given me a fucking migraine and potential depression and you know the dodgers back World Series losses, uh, Arsenal just utter levels of collapse, um, Seahawks, oh, you should have fucking run it, yeah, I, I've, I've heard that so many goddamn times, uh, the Lakers, six years in the ineptitude, and the Vegas Golden Knights, you blew a 3-1 series lead, and four goals on a power play, uh, four minutes and four seconds, I know, I hear that all the time, I do, but if you can't support your team, through the thick of it what are you as a fan you're a pussy that's the truth now boys and girls i'm gonna leave it at that so follow me at the sky lounge here in america because 
greatest country on earth. Follow me at the Skyline on all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. 